Hey YouTube, how you doing? Thought I'd do a video about the violence in prison, stabbings, assaults, and uh, fights. You know, some of them by the guards too. You know, people don't know about that. Well, ex-cons do. Anyway. If you like prison content, you like hearing about this stuff, then hit that subscribe, uh, hit that like, share this video. Okay, let's get into it. When I, the first prison I was in, Missouri State Penitentiary, was was the most violent of all the ones I've been in. And uh, I mean, that's not to take away from the others. They had violence too, it just wasn't as bad as that one, you know. And uh, seen all kinds of shit there, you know. I seen people hit up beside the head with metal mop ringers, and that's why they used to cone ones now where you have to squeeze it out, you know. It's plastic. And, uh, you know, the guys back there told me that before I got there, years before I got there, it was even worse, which is. It's just hard for me to imagine, you know, you know, it's, it was bad, you know, so I'm, I, it's hard for me to imagine it being worse, but they said that the plates in the chow hall were made out of this tin, and people would get hit upside the head with them, you know, there's, uh, one guy got put on death row, I, I didn't witness this or see it, thank God, but, uh, Supposedly he tortured his sully and, and stuck a stinger up his butt and plugged it in. They was 500 watt stingers back then and they'd get red real quick and blow up, you know. So he, he killed the guy. And uh, seen people, you know, some people were pushed off the top tiers. Some people hung themselves from the top tier. At least one I know of did, and that was because he was raped. Supposedly he was raped for snitching on somebody. I've seen people playing. They used to have these tables set out in the yard, and people would gamble there, you know. And I've seen a guy come up behind the guy and just start stabbing him in the back, you know. One time I was on the way to a visit. go one way there's a, like this control center and you go one way it's medical go another way it's visiting and I'm standing in this little open area between and here comes this guy he had a white t-shirt on but it was bloody you know red with blood and he's kind of staggered in there and he said he needed medical what well, it was obvious he did you know he needs some type of help but I kind of put my finger on him and pushed him away that's not because I didn't care or anything but I was more concerned about getting my visit if he like fell into me touched me or something you know and I got blood on me then it probably would have held up my visit you know besides I didn't know the guy you know and back then you, you mind your own business you know and uh, I seen people get hit with shanks some of them was I mean looked like knives other ones was just made out of a piece of fence or something taken off of a piece of metal taken off of bleachers some of them was plastic you know just keep melting plastic and, and filing it down to a point and uh, you may even wonder why the pieces back then you know we call them pieces of thumpers people call them shanks you know these why they was wrapped up with string or something like that that's to keep your hand from slipping but anyway 
this next story is uh, is about me and uh, I uh, never been hit so hard in my life and I'm kind of ashamed to hope this air conditioner don't mess with my voice for a bit. I'm gonna turn it up just for a second but back then when I first came to prison before I got to know people and stuff I kind of had a racist attitude and I'm I'm so glad I got over that you know there's so much to learn from other people you know we can all learn from each other but anyway I also wasn't too bright so at Christmas they used to pass out these bag of nuts and this bag of candy you know one of each and they hooked you up pretty good on Christmas so I had all these nuts different types of nuts laid out on this fucking shelf you know that they gave us that was attached to the wall and this guy comes by and he says can I get some of those Brazilian nuts I, you know I'll give you some walnuts or something for those Brazilian nuts I didn't know what he was talking about you know I never heard of Brazilian nuts and uh, so I kept pointing at each one you know until finally I pointed at the right one and he said yeah those and without thinking I said oh you mean those inward toes and he just got mad and he stopped off saying he's gonna kill me and uh, you should always take that serious when somebody tells you that in prison and uh, somebody my neighbor he tells me he said hey he was laughing he said man you're crazy man he said but you when they pop the doors for child you need to be ready he said because he is he's gonna be waiting on you and he was <laughs> there was this long hallway that actually goes all the way across the prison but we call it the tunnel and so he uh he's waiting for me there and he threw one punch and I missed and he hit me with the second one man and he didn't knock me out man but I've never been hit so hard in my life and I'm just thankful there were some guards not too far away you know have you ever noticed that this is more toward the ex-cons if you're winning a fight it seems like the guards the 5-0 get there in no time they're, they're right there they pop out of nowhere if you're losing, most of the time it seems like it takes forever for them to get there. <laughs> and probably about half the time I was on the losing end. And uh, I got a fight with this one dude in the cell because uh, he mistaked me for somebody else. And uh, I asked him, you know, who you mugging? And then it just escalated from there. You know, we got to arguing. So when they popped the doors for child I went in his cell and, and we got to fight and he was a little dude and I, I didn't think I'd have any problems with him but I did I had my hands full and uh, it finally got to where we just stopped fighting and we sat down on the bunk and uh, we're all both of us bruised up and bleeding and uh, we washed up in the sink you know we get to talking and we you know we talked it out but uh, we got caught you know and so we both went through the hole for fighting and I had two rights one for out of bounds and one for fighting and uh, some of the fights I I won but you know I'm gonna be honest with you you know about half of them I would say I, I lost or it was like that one there even though you know it kind of was a draw I felt like I got my ass whooped you know and he told me he felt the same way but that little squirrely dude and uh anyway 
there's one fight that I don't even count because it wasn't a fight and it was against Elaine and you know he wasn't made like that you know he didn't have it in him you know he wasn't a fighter he didn't uh, he avoided that at all costs you, you can't get any points for that but what I will give him credit for it was he told me that I had to whoop his ass and um, and I did and while I hit him knocked him down and there was a guy that I knew in the in the doorway and he grabs me and he says come on man he said you're gonna get assault so he takes me down to his cell we thought for sure the dude was gonna tell and he didn't and uh, they locked him up, you know, they put him in the hole. He told me he got hit with a piece of ice, you know, it was wintertime, there's snow and ice outside. They didn't go for that, you know. Then they questioned me, and uh, they was gonna lock me up, but my cell he kept uh, saying that uh, I didn't do nothing, so they let me go, you know. But they said they, even when they was letting me go, they said they knew I did it, you know. But you know, beating up chomos, lambs, and things like that, even though, you know, chomos deserve to get beat up, they don't deserve to be on the fucking yard. Period. I don't care what anybody says, they don't need to be on the yard. In fact, they need more time, and they need to be in the hole or in PC some, somewhere, you know, but you, you can't give yourself any points for that because most of them are not fighters I don't think none of them are really but uh, anyway you know it's things like that and another time this is not long after I got there um, I guess I've been there a few months at the walls um, this, you know it had to open front with bars you know and this black dude I was heating up coffee <laughs> stinger <coughs> I'm sorry this is kind of funny but I was mad at the time I was heating up water in the stinger for coffee you know instant coffee that's what we got back there you know so this black guy comes up there and pulls out his piece and lays it on the bars and uh I take that cup of hot coffee, you know, coffee water, and throw it right on his three-piece, you know. And uh, he said, uh, I mean, he just screamed and yelled and ran off, and I didn't see him for a long time. I don't know what happened to him. But one day I was going out to the yard, and you had to kind of go down this embankment on this one area, you know, and he was coming up. And he says, you remember me? I said, I don't know who you are. Well, he reminded me who he was. And, um, so he pulls out this shank and he says, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you from asshole to appetite. You know, I'm, I'm gonna fuck you up, dude. Now, as worried as I was, I've tried to put on a tough act, you know, I said, I'm going to take it from you and shove it up your ass, you know, but really, I was, I was nervous. But anyway, we get to fighting, rolling around on the ground, on the pavement and gravel and shit, and uh, I finally get the piece from him, and uh, by that time, I get... I mean, I just didn't knock them up to the ground. I mean, I, I ate concrete and uh, scarred those handcuffs behind me on my back, you know, cuffs me up, picks me up, and uh, he tells me, he looks at me, he goes, he looks at the other guy, he goes, you didn't have that, that guy did. And I said, what? He goes, just when they talk to you, you didn't have that in your hands. He said, I'm tired of this dude. And uh, I said, okay. 
and uh, that, then I realized I was bleeding. I did not realize I was bleeding, but <clears throat> I was bleeding a little bit from up here, and then there's a small area on my back where I was bleeding, but um, I didn't even know about it, you know. That's just weird, you know. But after the, the fight and everything, the longer I went, you know, like over at medical, it started like stinging, you know, and that was before they even put anything on. Then I forgot to tell you about when I first got there, you know, and, uh, I'd been there about a month. I might have told you this in another video, but I went to the upper yard and uh, that's usually where the whites don't hang out at you know at least not by themselves and, uh, and so I was approached by three people actually two but one was just kind of standing there and uh, they told me I was going to be their bitch and, and I spit on them you know on one of them so they started beating the shit out of me and I started walking away and my, well my dumb ass had to open my mouth and call them some punks so they uh, came back and put the boots to me kicked me, stomped me all this and that but the reason I'm kind of laughing about this is because years later I was telling this young guy that was they're, they, they, they have this thing called 120 day shock or they used to when they bring people in it was to scare them you know just give them a taste of prison and he was asking me and this other guy about the walls you know everybody wanted to know about the walls that hadn't been there you know the bloodiest 47 acres you know but anyway so I, I told him this story and uh, when I got to the part where I was telling him that they was kicking and stomping me he says, what were you thinking? And I said, I was thinking I should have kept my mouth shut, you know? <laughs> and I, that was what I was thinking. But I got to, I wouldn't say who did it, you know? Even though I think they showed me some pictures of the guys, but, you know, everybody looked the same to me, you know? And, um, Anyway, they, they wrote me up. Well, they gave me a write-up. I, I don't know how this could be a write-up. I did 10 days in the hole for being a victim of an assault. I, I, to this day, I don't understand that. Anyway, this dude, the walkman in the hole, came by and says, Hey, one of the boys, that, guys that whooped your ass, beat you up, they want to see your violation. Make sure you didn't snitch. So I send it up there. Pretty soon he comes back. And you gotta realize my eyes are swollen shut. My nose is kind of messed up. I mean, I'm messed up everywhere, really. And uh, he came back and said, Oh, they said you're cool. And, and they told, they had me send you down this joint, right? So I feel this joint. In my hands and it, it doesn't feel like a joint I said what is this and he goes that's what they call a prison dime sack he goes it's about half of a street dime sack I said well okay I, I mean I had trouble even holding it you know so the dude healed it for me you know couldn't see you know in fact the next day at breakfast he had the guard open the cell door and he, he fed me, you know. I mean, because I went to get out of bed and I just fell onto the floor. And uh, I couldn't see my plate and I couldn't see. And, uh, but that's a couple of stories about me getting my ass whooped, you know. The first one, um, I told you about with, with the nuts, I had that coming people I had that coming you know and over time you know it's not like out west where 
it's segregated, you know. I mean, it kind of is segregated, but it's not, you know. You can talk to black people and vice versa, you know. And so I became friends with uh, some blacks, you know. Some of them are good people. Some of them are actually better than white people in prison. You know, you got some scandalous white dudes too, you know. Yeah. But uh, I've seen fights over everything you can. I've seen guys just start out playing and get in a fight. When I was in Potosi, two huge guys. And when I mean huge, I mean they was, they had guts on them, but it wasn't all fat. I mean, they had muscles too. And uh, one was a lot bigger than the other one. And uh, I mean, he was like seven foot tall and stuff. But anyway, they get to playing in the kitchen with one another, you know, throwing pancakes and food and stuff at one another, having like a little food fight. And then the, the smaller one takes a pancake and slaps the other dude with it. Where well, the dude punches him. And then picks him up like a wrestling move and slams him down on the floor. And uh, the dude wasn't light. I mean, he picked him up like he was just a sack of potatoes and threw him down. All the, over they, you know, they was laughing and joking until he, the dude got slapped with a pancake you know and then it was just like that it was on you know and that's the way it is in prison you know uh, it can be things can just change in an instant you know and I know that there's been a couple guards behind the walls threatening to beat my ass you know and I know that it has happened you know others have told me about it and um I seen it one time in Potosi through, through I was looking at this like monitor thing <clears throat> and seen it and uh, they they turned the thing and, and made me leave you know but I was watching the dude he was strapped to you know these chairs they strap you down to you know people and you know, they put a mask like a screen on them they had that dude in one of these things and, and was just beating the shit out of him and I think I know the name of the guard who did it, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's not just violence from, the, from, you know, convict on convict or prisoner on prisoner. Not everybody in prison is a convict. So uh, I apologize to all the convicts out there. You know, you got some people that are inmates, you know. Snaky ass people, ratting, snitching. That you know, it's sometimes it's guard on on prisoner, and sometimes it's prisoner on guard. <laughs> I've seen we're, we was allowed to have these small crock pots for a while, you know. And I remember this guard. You know, he seemed like a cool guard, but he, for some reason he had a problem with this guy. And he would harass him and harass him and harass him. And one day he was standing out front, in front of the housing unit. And the dude put his crock pot in a laundry bag and came out there and swung with all these force and hit that guard in the back of the head. The guard jumped right back up and started fist fighting him. I mean, he's... <laughs> And this was an older guard too. I mean, he wasn't real old, but the, but compared to the dude who, you know, the guy who hit him, he was he's pretty old, you know. But he he got up and started duking it out with him, and guards started running, you know. And oh, that reminds me, I gotta tell this one before I forget it. There was a dude that came to prison that had raped this woman where the woman's brother was in prison in that prison and so a bunch of guys arranged for a fight down at the, like a 
a big fight down at the one in the yard. I mean, a bunch of them just got into it with a bunch of others. Now, I don't know if the one bunch, I don't know if both groups knew about this and, and it was planned, or is this one group decided just to attack another group? Anyway, all the guards from everywhere were running down there as hard as they could to break this fight up. And this dude was up there at the other end with the other dude. And uh, he stabbed the shit out of him. I mean, he it wouldn't stop. He just kept sticking him and sticking him, you know. And he had plenty of time to do it. Of course, he got caught, you know. And, but he didn't care, you know. But these are the type of things that happen in prison, you know. Now in South Central Correctional Center, um, I mean, it's always had a little bit of violence. You know, I've seen like a chomo get beat to death and there's fights and stuff all the time. But in Six House, all of a sudden, people are fighting over the phones. I mean, they always have been, you know, but now people are getting stabbed. You got to watch your step, you know, on the wing, the pod, whatever you want to call it, because blood and stuff I know this because one of my partners still in there is telling me about it and he said what it is is you get 15 minutes on a phone after you get your 15 minutes you cannot use the phone again for an hour they got it set up that way if you try to call again you can't make a call so what people are doing or they're getting on the phone using their 15 minutes and then call them back again using their partner's pin number for the phone and so they may stay on there you know for an hour using their friends you know partners uh, pin numbers and other people are getting tired of it so now there's a lot of stabbings over that you know but What the? But anyway, that's about all I got for you today, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, like I said, share it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.